Hello, this is Lazarus at Telecom Tech, where telecom and networking technologies are simply explained. Today, we'll be simply explaining how BGP prefers the lowest IGP metric to the next hop as part of the BGP best path algorithm. Now, just a short reminder, please subscribe to the channel to get updates to new videos. And let me know in the comments below if you have topics that you would like me to address in the future. If you like this video, please do click that thumbs up button. Now, the first thing to mention here is that this particular attribute is meaningful only within a particular autonomous system. That means that it kicks in only when we're looking at two possible paths to a particular destination via two different IBGP peers within an AS. It's meaningless when we compare two possible paths via EBGP neighbors. This is because IGPs, or Interior Gateway Protocols, operate only within an AS. No IGPs operate between EBGP peers, so there's no IGP metric to measure. So this attribute only has meaning when we're talking about two or more candidate routes that have next hop IPs of IBGP peers within an AS. Now, in order to understand that better, let's take a look at a more specific example. Let's take a look at this topology to get a better idea of when this attribute will act as a tiebreaker. Now, our focus will be on R1, and the destination network we're going to be examining is the 30.30.30.0 slash 24 network. So let's take a look at the BGP table found in R1. We have learned about two possible paths to get to the destination network, one via R2 and one via R3. Now let's go through the various BGP attributes in order to determine when we get to the tiebreaker of the lowest IGP metric. First, we see that the weight is the same, so is the local preference, and neither route was originated locally. Thus, they are equal. The AS path length is the same, since our scope is only within our AS100, and the origin code is the same since both routes were injected into the AS using an IGP. MED is also the same here for both routes. And finally, EBGP routes are preferred over IBGP routes, but both of these are learned via IBGP, so there's no tiebreaker here. Finally, we get to the next attribute, which is preferring the lowest IGP metric. Now, the lowest metric doesn't actually appear in the BGP table. However, the local routing table of the router is used to determine this. Now, we may be using EIGRP or OSPF or some other IGP within the AS to allow these IBGP routers to communicate with each other. In any case, we can see here that the metric to reach R3 must be larger than the metric to reach R2. We can infer this simply because there's an extra hop in there. So since there's an extra hop there, it's most likely that the metric is higher via that path. Therefore, R2 is chosen as the best path because it has the smallest IGP metric to the next hop. And this is shown here by the greater than sign. Now, the question remains, why is the lowest IGP metric preferred? Well, it simply makes sense. If everything else is equal, then the most efficient path to the next hop should be the path with the lowest IGP metric, simply because it's the shortest. This ensures that routing within an AS to get to some destination that may be outside of the local AS will be as efficient as possible. So that's why BGP prefers the path with the lowest IGP metric to the next hop. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, please click that thumbs up button. If you'd like me to address other related topics, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And please subscribe to get updates to newly published videos. I'm Lazarus at Telecom Tech. I hope this video has been helpful for you, and I'd like to thank you for watching.